Hello, this is Brett Premack joining you from the Sonoran Desert. Beautiful day out here in the mid 70s. The wind is blowing, the sun is shining. I'm looking out at the mountains here. What a lovely place to live. The subject of today's dissertation of sorts is uh, the film Miles Ahead, which I saw last night, thanks to Yvonne Irvin of the Tucson. Jazz Festival, Jazz in January, wonderful event we have out here in Tucson every year for people from cold climates who want to escape the January frigid temperatures and hear some great jazz. So thanks to Yvonne for the invitation. I'd be I'd been wanting to see the film that kind of propelled me out of the home into the theater. This is uh, a film that a lot of people are going to talk about. Obviously, people in the jazz community. Outside the jazz community, the film community, I don't know. I have some thoughts on that. In fact, what I want to do is talk about this in two ways. I want to talk about it just as a film. I want to divorce the subject matter, the person, the man, the genius, Miles Davis, from the film aspect of it. And then also I'd like to talk about how the film portrayed Miles Davis, uh, in particular Don Cheadle. Up front, let me tell you, I know how difficult it is to make a film, and especially a film as complex with the kind of budget that this film required. Uh, it's a labor of love. I'm certain Don Cheadle is not going to be, be, uh, be financially compensated for you know almost a decade of work, and that's I'm sure why he didn't do it. Don is a very successful actor, deservedly so. I'm a big uh, Don Cheadle fan. Uh, I've liked his work in a lot of films, and he's on that... Showtime show, financial guy, I can't remember what the show is. Saw a couple episodes, I don't uh, subscribe to Showtime. But, uh, so, hats off to him for being the sort of artist who is willing to take a challenge and do his best to execute it. In terms of the film, let's go into the basis of the film, which for me is the script. Because... Whatever happens on screen, whatever happened, whatever special effects or whatever can be put on the screen, for me, it's really about the script, the story, the characters, what happens to them. Uh, the first thing that I look for uh, in a film in a good script is uh, a character that I'm fascinated by and uh, something has to happen to that character over the course of the film so that I learn more about the character. Something happens in the story. Usually it's a, a character that overcomes obstacles. That would be a simple... Uh, now, not, obviously not all films are like that, but I'm just saying basic script writing, antagonist, protagonist, conflict, these kinds of things, that drives a good script. Uh, we open the film with Miles getting his ass kicked, and Miles is getting his, his ass kicked all over the place in this film. Uh, honestly, uh, let's divorce Miles from this, but the character, we'll call him Mr. X. Uh, Mr. X, we quickly learn, is a very troubled character. Of course, that troubled character, now the bell is ringing, biopic, jazz musician, biopic, jazz musician. When I was a kid, and I was getting into the music when I was eight or nine years old, there were actually a couple of biopics which uh, introduced me to musicians and the music. One was The Five Pennies with Danny Kaye and Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong up on the screen was very powerful. Uh, and also the film The Glenn Miller Story, because my dad was a veteran of the, ba uh, the big band era, so I could definitely relate to that. And uh, both those stories were uh, Hollywoodized, I would say, sanitized. Uh, although the two characters depicted in those two films uh, weren't uh, really troubled guys, per se, like some of the other biopics of great jazz musicians. I was never a fan of the film Bird by Clint Eastwood, uh, and that kind of presented the challenge of how do you present a, a musician, an innovator, a genius? How do you tell their story? Because... The story that was told in Bird and the story that was told here about Miles, that's only a slice of their life. Their lives are much more complex. Back to the, the film itself. So I've got, we've got a main character here 
who's some kind of drug thing going on and all kinds of problems and uh, gets his ass kicked and fights and guns. And by the end of the film, honestly, I didn't learn anything more about this character. Some incidents in his life were presented. Uh, the, the character in this film was once beaten up uh, by some musicians when he was standing outside of a jazz club where he was appearing. True story that happened to Miles Davis in front of Birdland. And uh, I can't forget right, I can't remember right now, but there were a couple other uh, so called uh, incidents from Miles' life that were depicted in this. Uh, but they didn't really tell me, they didn't really drive the story forward for me. Uh, now, Chris, I enjoyed the film visually. It was fun to watch. In fact, because I'm a film guy and I'm a filmmaker, I can sit down really and watch any film and enjoy it. The thing for me, and also that holds true with music. I mean, I could go see a polka band, a mariachi band, uh, just about anything. Don't put me to a hip hop concert, please. That's just not my thing. Oh, although there are uh, some people that I would check out, but that's another another topic. Um, sit down, watch a film. I can enjoy any film. The real thing is, what happens? Do I remember it the next day? Is there something in that film? that reached out to me, that taught me something, that touched me emotionally. Most of the time that doesn't happen. Uh, with the Miles film the next day, nothing. Uh, Well-made film, I mean, certainly the editing was good, but I found that uh, a little too long. I was like squirming in my seat. I don't know, I have to look up the exact length there. But I, I just, after a while, because it was a lot of the same thing over and over again. Uh, I love the portrayal of the uh, the record company people, the sleazy record company people, sleazy producer. Uh, I never knew George, not George Benson. This is what happens when you're on the wrong side of 60. These names just don't... Uh, George Butler. These names don't come out of the air so easily. So I didn't know George Butler. I know he produced a lot of good music and he, and he helped a lot of people when he was at Columbia. He was the kind of guy who could survive in that environment, like a Bruce Lundvall. Some people can navigate the corporate corridors of Record Kingdom and manage to uh, ex escape with their dignity intact. Uh, but uh, let's get over to the Miles Davis side of this. And I see Carlos here, my buddy Carlos, who's a trumpet player, somebody who's listening to Miles, and he said, I didn't care about Miles' life as a drug dealer or hustler. I wanted to see more about the music. That's what made it famous. Not uh, not the drugs. Well, you know, uh, that's the uh, that's the downfall of these types of movies. And in fact, there have been a number of movies about junkie musicians. There's a Chet Baker movie out. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, but I, I think back to the first one I saw like that when I was a kid was Sal Mineo, who had a supposed, uh, not Sal Mineo, Gene Krupa story starring Sal Mineo. Uh, which was, I think, the first movie that introduced the word marijuana to my, <laughs> to my ears. Maybe I was 10 or 11 years old. Hey, Dad, what's marijuana? That's a drug. Don't do that. Okay. But, uh, oh, bird. Oh, my God, what a mess. So, anyway, the story they chose to tell, Don Cheadle and his script writer, was they focused on this aspect of, supposed aspect of Miles' life, drug dealing junkie, um, not really drug dealing, but uh, being a junkie and, and violence and that type of stuff. Certainly that was an element of part of Miles' life. Uh, Miles has acknowledged that. And uh, through that peephole, they decided to tell the story of one of the biggest, one of the greatest. I mean, I, I can't, there aren't words to express how I feel about Miles Davis and his music. One of the remarkable creators of the 20th century. And to depict him, to tell his story through the lens of uh, drugs and violence, I mean, I just don't get it. It didn't work for me. I found it to be insulting in a way. There were some other things that really bugged me about the movie. Uh, there was that scene at the end, uh, which musically actually I, I found interesting, uh, with Robert Glasper and Herbie Hancock and Esperanza and uh, Antonio Sanchez was playing drums. Wayne played a little bit. Why was that in the movie? How did that fit into the story? I didn't get that. Uh, in an earlier scene, which took place in Miles' uh, house on 77th Street, a place I went by many times. I was never inside Miles' house, but I met Miles once. 
uh, at a uh, Sunnyside Gardens, uh, a boxing arena in Queens. A friend of mine was into boxing. He took me in Miles, who was also a boxing fan. It's a bit of that in the film. And he uh, he was there. Miles and Gary Bartz, who's since become a very close friend of mine. Uh, Miles and two beautiful ladies were there. And I, t I talked to him for a little bit. And I saw him in person many times. And uh, I have a lot of close friends who knew Miles really well, including Sonny Rollins. And my friend, the late Walter Bishop Jr., was also close to Miles. Miles is part of my life. And uh, I think it's a tragedy in a way that uh, he's, he's, he's depicted this way. Uh, but this is what happens with famous people. Prince died recently. And uh, since he passed, all this shit is coming out about him. The good stuff is that I didn't know was Prince was an incredible philanthropist, helped a lot of people, gave a lot of people money on this. Zach Swartz says, I'll probably pass. Yeah, you can watch it on HBO or whatever. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, train of thought out the window. Okay, so that's basically my take on uh, on Miles Ahead. A passable movie, but not a very fair depiction of a genius. How do you depict a genius in a film like this? I, you know, I've seen a couple. I saw I could, one film comes to mind. One jazz film. Uh, it's hard to remember good jazz films. This is something that really hasn't really hasn't come to to pass very often. Occasionally something we're going to... There's one that sticks in my mind. It wasn't a biopic. It was a film called The Gig. Look it up on the web. Google it. The Gig. The only jazz musician who was in it was Warren Vachey, a wonderful actor who passed Cleavon Little was in it. I think Ray, Wayne Rogers, late of the MASH show. It was about some musicians up at a gig uh, in a band up at the Catskills in the early 60s. It was... It was a good movie. It kind of got more into the joy of the music. And that's what I find most jazz movies do not pick up on. In this effort to tell the story of these sometimes troubled people, and we're all troubled in some way. I mean, that's you can't go through life without being troubled at a certain point in this life. Most filmmakers ne neglect the joy of the music. I grew up as a jazz fan. When I came to New York to go to NYU Film School, I used to hang out at the Village Vanguard. I got to like eventually get in the kitchen and I just sat there and I listened and I heard the sounds of these people, these musicians, their love for each other, their laughter, their complete and other commitment to the music and creativity. I've never seen that depicted in a film. I don't know if it's possible. Maybe that's just you have to listen to the music and that's it. Thanks for watching.